The human body isn't kind to foreign substances. Regardless of whether the substance entering has a harmful intent, the body works to quickly break down and excrete the said material. This entire process fits under the term of xenobiotic metabolism, derived from the Greek word xenos, meaning stranger, and biotic, meaning related to living beings. Xenobiotic metabolism is a set of metabolic pathways utilized to modify the chemical structure of foreign compounds and remove the substances from the body. In this video, I will be focusing on one of the many facets of xenobiotic metabolism, pharmaceutical drug metabolism. The reaction pathways in regards to drug metabolism are especially important as we take various medications to alleviate the symptoms of an illness, whether on a prescription basis or just from over-the-counter pain relievers. The purpose of drug metabolism is to inactivate the drug and make it easier to excrete from the body. The liver is the principal site of synthesis, and though the enzymes connected to this pathway are present in nearly all tissues of the body, most of the metabolic activity is concentrated in the liver. Drug metabolism is categorized into two phases, phase 1 and phase 2. Phase 1 involves the formation of a new functional group or the modification of an existing functional group to make a compound more polar. Reactions that take place during this phase include oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, hydration, conjugation, and isomerization. Phase 2 involves the conjugation of the original compound with an endogenous or internal substance as a means to further increase solubility and promote detoxification. Reactions that fall into this phase include glucuronidation, sulfation, acetylation, and various conjugations to items such as amino acids or fatty acids. As the diagram depicts, there are several pathways that drugs can take. While it is more common for the drug to pass through both phases, it is not always necessary as different drugs have different compositions. A nonpolar and lipid soluble compound can enter the body and pass through phase 1. And if the modifications that occur in phase 1 were enough to make the compound excretable, then metabolite A can go straight to the excretion process. But if not, the compound can go through phase 2 and be removed as the newly formed metabolite C. Delving a little deeper into phase 1 reactions, the overall purpose of this step is to prime the chemicals for phase 2 metabolism and subsequent removal from the body. The reactions that take place during phase 1 attach or modify functional groups to configure the drugs into a proper state to react when undergoing phase 2 conjugate mechanisms, and oxidation is the most utilized pathway reaction. Cytochrome P450 is the most important enzyme within phase 1 metabolism, and it causes oxidation reactions. It belongs to a superfamily of proteins that contain a heme cofactor, but was named in regards to the light absorption level when complex with carbon monoxide, or CO. Cytochrome P450 contains an iron atom that alternates between the ferrous and the ferric states and acts like a terminal oxidase. The oxidation process requires four compounds, cytochrome P450, cytochrome P450 reductase, NADPH, and molecular oxygen. An oxidized form of cytochrome P450 forms a binary complex with the drug substrate to which NADPH donates an electron to the cytochrome P450 reductase to reduce the newly formed drug complex. Then a second electron is donated to the drug substrate complex once again from the NADPH via the cytochrome P450 reductase and ends up reducing the molecular oxygen which then forms an activated oxygen cytochrome P450 drug substrate complex. The activated oxygen is then transferred directly onto the drug substrate of the complex, thereby forming an oxidized product to move on to the next stage. Though oxidation is more commonly used, there are other reactions that can take place during phase 1. Their reactions include condensation, which combines two smaller molecules into a larger molecule, usually removing water as a byproduct hydrolysis, which breaks down a chemical through the addition of water, or isomerization, which is an alteration in the arrangement of the atoms. Any combinations of these reactions can take place, and even multiple may be necessary to properly configure the drug into a proper state, but the overall purpose is to make the drug more polar by adjusting the functional groups that are present. Phase 2 reactions prepare the pharmaceutical compound for excretion from the body, mostly through bile or urine. It is considered the true detoxification step of metabolism as it conjugates the drug to another substance to increase solubility. Glucuronidation, or conjugation to AD glucuronic acid, is the most important pathway for the drug metabolism. This reaction involves UDP glucuronosyl transferase, UGT, and the products are primarily secreted through bile. 
Other common reactions are sulfation. This is a pathway for phenols, select alcohols, amines, and thiols. An energy-rich donor is required and is more often 3-phosphoadenosine, 5-phosphosulfate. Acetylation is another common reaction for aromatic amines and sulfonamides and requires acetyl-CoA as a cofactor and n acetyltransferase as the functioning enzyme. So in summary, drug metabolism is a liver-centric process and the overarching purpose is to make a substance more water-soluble to excrete from the body, generally through bile or urine. This is completed by making the molecule more polar through adding or modifying functional groups or conjugating the drug with endogenous substances. Though broken into two phases, different drugs have different properties and some are more readily soluble than others, leading them to not need as many modifications for subsequent removal. Although the metabolism of drugs is largely dependent on the structure of the drug itself, there are other factors that can affect the metabolic rate. Some patients metabolize drugs quickly, while others metabolize their components at a much slower rate, and the reasons for this can be influenced by genetic factors, coexisting disorders, and drug interactions. Interactions with drugs can result in competition and produce an inhibitory effect on the metabolic rate. As the diagram suggests, if the drug's purpose is to enter the body to be broken down by enzymes into metabolites, then the inhibitor prevents that pathway from occurring. However, drugs can also act in a stimulatory manner and increase the rate of metabolism, giving some variance between metabolic rates among individuals. So this sums up a quick overview on drug metabolism. I hope it was informative and gave insight to some other metabolic processes that take place in the body aside from those related to food. Thank you very much for listening.